The common cold. Common colds don't have a specific remedy and are self-limiting in nature, with approximately two-thirds of sufferers recovering within a week, though it is unwise to dismiss this condition as inconsequential. Prevalence. The common cold, much like coughs, results from viral upper respiratory tract infections. Children are more susceptible to contracting colds, experiencing an average of 5 to 6 colds per year, but it can be as many as 12 colds per year in children aged 4 to 8, though by age 10 the frequency of colds in children diminishes by half. Adults typically endure 2 to 4 colds annually. In the Northern Hemisphere the colder months of December to February, have the highest instances of the common cold likely due to increased indoor congregation during cold weather, particularly among schoolchildren, facilitating transmission. Causative factors. Over 200 distinct virus strains can provoke common cold symptoms, including rhinoviruses which account for up to 50% of cases, coronaviruses, parainfluenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, and adenovirus. The primary mode of transmission involves direct contact with the virus via the hands, which subsequently touch the mucous membranes of the nose, mouth, and eyes. Coughing and sneezing facilitate transmission with droplets expelled from the nose coating surfaces and remaining viable for several hours, with frequent hand washing and use of disposable tissues pivotal in reducing transmission. Once the virus infiltrates the mucosa, it attaches to specific receptors in the nasal and bronchial epithelia, causing damage and triggering the release of inflammatory mediators, leading to inflammation of the nasal lining and increasing cell wall permeability, resulting in edema, manifesting as nasal congestion, and sneezing. Fluid passing down to the throat will transmit the virus to the throat and upper chest, resulting in a cough and sore throat with the first two days of a cold being the peak period for transmission. Diagnosis. It is highly probable that someone presenting with cold symptoms is suffering from a viral infection and most people self-diagnose themselves, though extra care is needed for the elderly. Sometimes it can be difficult to distinguish between a severe cold and flu. Manifestation. The nature and severity of symptoms can vary based on the causative agent and after an incubation period of one to three days, a sore throat and sneezing will likely follow, progressing to copious nasal discharge, congestion, and possibly cough. A headache and mild to moderate fever, below 38.9 degrees Celsius or 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and a general feeling of malaise may be present. Most colds resolve within a week but may last 14 or more days. Conditions to exclude. Rhinitis. Rhinitis, a blocked or stuffy nose, is commonplace and whether it is due to allergies will require an understanding of the symptoms and when they occur as well as knowledge of any family history of atopy, the genetic tendency to develop allergic diseases such as allergic rhinitis, asthma, and atopic dermatitis also known as eczema. Acute rhinosciasitis. Acute rhinosciasitis denotes inflammation in one or more of the paranasal sinuses. The sinuses, come in four pairs, include the frontal, ethmoid, maxillary, and sphenoid sinuses. They are air-filled spaces that lead to the nasal cavity and may fill with nasal secretions, which can stagnate due to diminished ciliary function in the sinus lining cells, allowing bacteria, such as Streptococcus and Haemophilus, to infect these stagnant secretions. It manifests with at least two of the following symptoms, reduced or lost sense of smell facial pain or pressure nasal discharge or upper airway cough syndrome nasal blockage or congestion. Initially the pain tends to be mild, localized, unilateral and dull. However, it may progress and become bilateral and more severe, with bending forward exacerbating the pain and sinuses may be tender to the touch. If the ethmoid sinuses, located in the upper nose and the sides of eyes, are affected pain behind the eye may be reported. Antibiotics are not routinely prescribed unless the condition is severe or there are underlying health concerns, and pain may be relieved by analgesics and oral or nasal decongestants. Acute otitis media. Acute otitis media frequently manifests in children following a common cold, when the virus infiltrates the middle ear through the eustachian tube, the tube that connect the ear to the throat 
leading to pus accumulation within the middle ear or inflammation of the eardrum which is known as the tympanic membrane. The primary symptom is ear pain, ear rubbing, and tugging and increased irritability and a rupture of the eardrum may result in a pus-filled discharge, which will relieve the pain. Unlikely causes. Influenza. Influenza virus is categorized into type A and type B, each comprising numerous strains that frequently mutate, modifying their antigenic structure, and necessitating the annual inclusion of specific influenza strains in vaccines, which are the most crucial preventive measure in reducing cases, with similar modes of transmission as the common cold such as droplet inhalation or direct contact. Subtle differences allow differentiating between the common cold and flu, with the flu season typically lasting from December to March, and though the common cold is more prevalent in winter months, can occur throughout the year. Influenza onset is abrupt, with shivering, chills, body aches, loss of appetite, insomnia, and a non-productive cough, while the common cold typically has a productive cough. Influenza tends to be more incapacitating, with symptoms improving within a week, with full recovery taking slightly longer. We really hope you enjoyed our video and found it informative, please kindly give us a thumbs up, share and subscribe for more content. Please give us your suggestions for future topics in the comments section.